Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got two for you today. Seriously Dead is touring the UK through 2017 now. It's a hilarious farce written by Leah Bell and starring Chrissy Rock. And I'm delighted to say they both join us this evening here at the Mansfield Palace. How are you both doing? I'm absolutely fine. Oh, I'm fantastic. Considering lovely Leah's done all the driving today, so I'm a bit more refreshed. <laughs> Do you get to nap or what do you do? Sit there telling stories? Well, that's how this come about when we sat there telling stories, wasn't it? We spent three years doing Dirty Dustin and then to cure our boredom in all the traffic, we, we came up with all kinds of little stories and then Leah, with their geniusness, put the plot together. So we're here on the tour of Seriously Dead, which is this show that I haven't seen yet, so I can't talk about it. But what I'm hearing is, A, it's brilliant. On the back of the show you'd previously written, it's not surprising that you're funny, because let's face it, you've been doing this all your life, haven't you? I've been doing, uh, well, we both have done comedy. Can I just say that, you know, when you said to Chrissy, do you nap in the car? Chrissy never stops talking. <laughs> so That's what I was implying. She talks all the way, she's talked all the way around the country. And so how we write together is I think of a plot and then I just listen to her <laughs> chuntering away and I use bits of it. She doesn't even know. <laughs> Nothing more funny than real life, is it? I know, but what happened was, I would come up with Seriously Dead, lovely Helen Russell, who was the original person in Dirty Dustin, she was 90, and um, Pat Dunn got sick, didn't she? Yeah. And um, Helen come on board, because she'd done it before. And we were in Cone, and she she said, oh, I must have a little nap. And there was nowhere to nap, so we put all the chairs. And I we went out and left her, and when we come back, I come out and I said, tell her what I said. She, she went in to see her. She wasn't feeling too grand, but she was 90. And she went in, she come running out, she went, you better get in there, because I think she's bought it. <laughs> and, you are, she said, she's not breathing. Has anybody got a mirror? And me, instead of saying, oh my goodness, let's phone for some medics, I said, well, it's showtime in half an hour, let's... <laughs> so, give it a shake. <laughs> <laughs> the best stuff is not written, it's just overheard. Yeah. I mean, Lee will agree that the famous saying is the show must go on. The times I've been in dressing rooms and had phone calls or heard people having phone calls going, one young lad had a phone call and he, he got told, your girlfriend's just jumped off a, off a car park and he's going, and tonight, and he's gone on the stage and had to deal with it when he's come off. So with us, the show must go on. You have to like cut it out of your mind to do that. You know, how we do it, I don't know. Do you still love it? I mean, you've been doing it for so long and it seems like you still have a passion. I look at you, the Christmas shows you do, which have been a great success, and then the previous tour and now this. Going into 2017, you've just booked a ton of new theatres. It's an amazing success. It seems like you still love it every day and want to do it. Well, I, I enjoy performing it, but especially if I'm in with a nice company. I mean, I've like Chrissy, I've been in companies where you've wanted to kill each other at the end of the first week and you've had another 12 to go. But this is a great company. Everybody gets on really well, and so I'm having a great time. And we look at your careers, as I say, I mean, you both got the clubs in common and, and a life in comedy as a stand-up. I wonder, just to touch on the female side of that, you both are formidable women. I can't imagine you ever having fear in front of a crowd, but it does take a certain balls to do it, doesn't it? To walk out there with confidence. Well, I haven't got fear of a crowd because the crowd is like a dog, a dog smells fear, and if it smells the fear of, of you, it'll go for you. So you have to, like, I go out like a machine gun. So um, that's how I deal with it. But the thing is, when um, Leah approached me for, for Dirty Dustin, a lot of people were like, well, you're both comics and you're both this. But we both have, well, I've got a lot of respect because when, when we do Dirty Dustin and Leah does this fabulous um, monologue type thing, I love sitting back, listening, listening to her. And that's the beauty of I've got no um, want to think I want to be as funny as her. So we give each other that space where that is re rare in, in comedy because some comics are very jealous of each other. It's like when Lee is funny, 
I step back and when it's my turn, we so we don't approach each other's space. And I think that's how we both get on as well because there's no, there's, n there's nothing there. We need each other. It's like a ballast of a boat. She needs to do her bit and um, for me. So I think, I mean, I think Leah took a gamble on taking me on because a lot of people warned her, but she, she come to me at the end of it and said, how wrong were they? And I was quite proud of that, what she said. What a lovely compliment. How do you know then? I mean, you've got five parts to cast, six, whatever it is in a show, and then you've got the pick of the crop because everybody's available these days. How do you choose whether it's Fraser, whether it's Billy, whether it's Chrissy? Well, a, a big part of it for me is uh, obviously the people have got to be capable of doing the part, but they also have to be a nice person. Divas are not allowed in this company because we don't tolerated at all. Well, also, it's distracting and it's time-consuming, isn't it? If you're wasting energy doing that, taking away from the play, at the end of it, it's just going to be miserable. I can't be bothered to walk on eggshells anymore. <laughs> I've done that, and I'm not doing it anymore. I don't blame no. you. And then we look at the script. How do you know you're funny? How? Well, I was just thinking before when you said about, you know, being nervous to go on stage, I, I never... Th thought about that before but I will bear it in mind next time I'm going on <laughs> I don't I'll want to scared. put you off <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, for most people they say standing in front of a crowd is the most terrifying thing you can ever do in life yet you do it for a living and so capably that is odd you know that well the thing is it's my sister who runs the office for me all the, the this administration which I'm you know she does for me she always says to me that the little chink in your personality that tells you it's okay to do that is also the chink that might make you do something just not quite the right thing to do. It's a fine line, isn't it? It's a fine line. Hopefully we're on the right side of that line. So, what, as I was saying when we done Dirty Dustin, if someone picked that up again, they couldn't do it like us because we completely revamped it, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we, um, Ed Woff and Trevor Wood wrote it and then when I, I got the script, I hacked it to death and then the last time Ed came to see it I came off and I said hi Ed did you enjoy it he said I loved it I didn't recognize it but I did love it so that's fantastic and in terms of the cast being recognizable you've got a stellar cast here of course we know you from Benidorm we know Billy from pantomime and comedy Fraser from Emmerdale is that important as well you can have the greatest play on earth but people have to know who you are to come out and buy a ticket because it's difficult out there to sell tickets they have to know who you are but when they do get there you have to deliver the goods that's what I think and then you, you get a reputation I'll tell you the best way of getting the word about is word of mouth and that's clearly what's happened with this show just so people know seriously dead this is a story centered around a coffin only because we had one <laughs> no it's actually I'll tell you what I think it is because we've all got a different take yeah. on what it is I think it's a love story between Billy and Thelma Thelma who starts off dead but can't get through the pearly gates because she's arrived too early but she's in love with Billy so she's not bothered about hanging around waiting for him that's what it's about and one by one we all Sounds get... like the story of my career, Christian. <laughs> we all meet our maker. <laughs> In various ways. All through the number 17 bus. <laughs> How long were you working on it to the point where you went, it's done, we'll leave it? Or are you still crafting? At least a day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a two days rehearsal. <laughs> now, we've been working on it, um, <clears throat> you know, discussing it for 18 yeah. months. And, and all those, I've got piles and piles of notes and bits and Chrissy sends you notes on the back of bag packets and everything and then I just sift through them and, and put it together. I'm more organised than she is. See, what it is, it's like if you write a story like once upon a time there was a princess who lived in a castle where then later ago, once upon a time there was a princess who lived in a castle in a beautiful wood by a lake that overlooked a stream. <laughs> so she... She's she has like, finesse. That's what she has the finesse <laughs> and the English grammar. <laughs> <laughs> now what she says is, she says I know some jokes and she knows where to put the commas <laughs> <laughs> and the full stops. But it works. I mean, this is the second one that's been a hit. I guess you can do as many of these as you want because word will spread and they'll keep coming back as long as the work's good. Well, you know, the the actual writing of it and the production of it, the it's my company that does the production. It's it's very difficult. To to get it all together and then we did the the rehearsals and the first time staging which is all 
you know, a bit mind blowing. And we did the first night, and it was a, a rip roaring success. And as we walked off, Madam went, "While we write on the next one," I went, "Oh, get lost, Chris." <laughs> <laughs> we are writing another one, but Mike, Mike Redway wrote the music, and every time he comes to see us, he cries. And every night he phones Leah up and goes, "Oh, Leah, what was it like tonight?" <laughs> The music is done amazing, hasn't he? Yeah. And they sing a lovely love song. And we all stand at the back, we're nearly crying. It's so lovely to see that you're having such fun and enjoying it because there are so many people on these tours, big, big productions that are utterly miserable. And it seems like you can play with it and have fun with it, which yeah. is really the key to show. We can't get, wait to get in the uh, A-theatres, can we? No, no, because we're going to have the gates swung in. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of wheeled on with the, with the ramp. <laughs> I guess that's part of the joy of it as well. Listen, if you ever need a stiff for next year or anything, I'm one of the best in the business, by oh, the way. Who could refuse so, that offer? Oh, it's been written in many a dressing room. Uh, ladies, thank you so much, oh, Leah Bell and Chrissy Rock, two oh, of my favourite people. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you.